Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be comparing the performance between the Raspberry Pi 4 8GB model with a $100 PC that I recently picked up on eBay. This is a 4th Gen i3 powered Optiplex 3020 and these are on eBay all day for $99 with free shipping. But I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I actually only paid $89 for this one here. Looked around did some bidding, and I actually won this one for $89 free shipping to the door. But if you're not into bidding and you just want to find one that's buy it now, they're $99 ship. So some people might think that this is an unfair comparison, but given the price point of the new Raspberry Pi 4 8 gigabyte model and all the accessories you need to buy, you can actually get out a little bit cheaper buying one of these used Optiplex PCs. And I completely understand that the Pi 4 is a development board, it's small form factor, low powered for different projects that you can do, but there are a ton of people out there that are buying these Pi 4s up to use them as desktop computers. Now with the Pi 4 8 gigabyte model over here, I also have a heat sink, power supply, micro HDMI cable, and a 64 gigabyte micro SD card. Altogether, this cost me about $108 to get it shipped to my door from Amazon. Now I can already tell you what the outcome of this whole thing is going to be. This PC will be more powerful than the Raspberry Pi, but the Raspberry Pi 4 does have this beat in a few different areas. First up, power consumption. Obviously, the Raspberry Pi 4 is going to draw less power than this PC will. And then second, we have the form factor. Even though this Optiplex is a small form factor PC, it's still humongous when you compare it to the size of a Raspberry Pi 4, even if you have one of the biggest cases for the Pi 4 attached. The Raspberry Pi 4 runs Linux, and a lot of people are using Raspberry Pi OS. There's tons of other ones to mess around with, but in this video we're going to be running Raspberry Pi OS on the Raspberry Pi 4, and luckily for us, we can actually install Raspberry Pi OS on this desktop PC, even though it has an Intel CPU, otherwise known as an x86 CPU. Well, it's not exactly Raspberry Pi OS, but the Raspberry Pi Foundation does offer a very similar operating system known as Raspberry Pi Desktop and this will run on x86 CPUs. It's based on Debian, just like Raspberry Pi OS, and when it comes right down to it, it looks exactly the same because we're using that Pixel desktop. So before we get into testing, I did want to go over the specs real quick. On the Raspberry Pi 4, for the CPU, we have a Broadcom BC2711. This is a quad-core ARM A72 CPU at 1.5 GHz. But in all of my tests in this video, I will have the CPU overclocked to 2.1 GHz. For RAM, we have 8 gigs of LPDDR4, 3200 SD RAM. Storage is going to be handled by a 64 gigabyte micro SD card, and this does have built-in AC Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5.0, something that the Optiplex does not have. But over on the Optiplex, we have an Intel i3-4170 CPU. This is a dual-core CPU with four threads at 3.7 gigahertz. 8 gigs of DDR3 RAM running at 1600 megahertz and a 500 gigabyte Western Digital mechanical hard drive. I really wanted to swap this out with an SSD, but I wanted to keep that price as low as possible. If you do end up getting one of these machines, I would highly recommend throwing a 120 or 240 gigabyte SSD in here as your boot drive. And like I mentioned, this Optiplex does not have built-in Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, but we do have gigabit ethernet. And later on down the road, you could always pick up a cheap Wi-Fi or a Bluetooth dongle from Amazon. Okay, so here we are with Raspberry Pi OS for x86, or Raspberry Pi Desktop is what they're calling it. If I head over to the terminal real quick, you can see that we're on the Optiplex 3020. We have that 8 gigs of RAM, and we're running that i3-4170. So everything looks like Raspberry Pi. It looks like Raspberry Pi OS, but it functions a lot better. And since we're running an x86 CPU, there's a lot of different applications that we can install that just aren't available on the Raspberry Pi without major hacks, like Steam here. I've installed Half-Life 2 and CSGO. We're going to test that out in a second, but uh, let me go over here to my task manager. As you can see, we still have our CPU usage. We have our RAM usage over here. And I've also installed some different browsers because the Chromium web browser with this x86 CPU just didn't perform as well as regular old Google Chrome. And I've set it as my default browser. One of the main things a lot of people complain about with the Raspberry Pi 4 when they're using it as a desktop operating system is video playback through YouTube. I mean, that is a major complaint. So we're gonna head over here to YouTube and we'll see how this performs. So we're actually at 1440p, turn on stats for nerds, we had one drop frame at 1440, 
Now this chip really does struggle when you bump it up from 1440 to 4K. Got lots of freeze ups. And we're dropping tons of frames, but if we just go back down to 1440p, which still looks absolutely amazing, even in full screen mode, it works really well. Let it buffer out a little bit. We'll stop dropping those frames, as you can see here. 47 dropped out of 600 out of 700 and with something like this 720 1080 1440 is going to be no issue at all i have not tested any standalone video players like vlc but i do imagine that this cpu could handle 4k playback with the right codec so now i just want to give you a little real-time comparison here on the left hand side we have the raspberry pi 4 8 gigabyte model overclocked to 2.1 gigahertz on the right hand side we have this x86 pc running this raspberry pi desktop so at 720p the raspberry pi is actually doing a pretty good job we haven't dropped too many frames but we still have some dropped let's take it up to 1080 on both of these and this is where the Pi 4 starts to struggle, even with that overclock. And it does take a little while for those drop frames to register on the Pi 4, but it will continuously drop frames until the end of the video. I think by the end of this 40 second clip here, I was at over 200. Next up, WebGL test using the Chromium browser. Left hand side, we still have that Pi overclocked to 2.1 gigahertz. On the right hand side, the x86 PC. Even with 100 fish on screen, the Pi 4 can't hit 60 with WebGL. This is just WebGL samples. You can Google it, try it on your own PC to see how it does. Now, as for gaming on something like this, if you add a little dedicated GPU, you're going to get much better performance than you're going to see in this video, and I haven't actually tested this yet. This is running the Intel HD 4600 GPU that's built into the CPU, and we're going to test out CSGO. Pretty sure we'll have a good time with Half-Life 2, though. Low settings, 720p, we're getting over 40 FPS, and this is not optimal for running a game like this. I would definitely add a dedicated GPU, but keep in mind, at the time of making this, a Raspberry Pi 4 can't even run this game. So I'd say for a PC that's the same price as a Raspberry Pi 4 8GB setup, it's doing a pretty good job. Next up, we have Half-Life 2, low settings, 1080p, and to tell you the truth, I probably could have bumped this up to medium settings because we're well over 60 right now. You could lock it at 60, medium settings, 1080, and it would run it all day. But on low settings here, we're getting well over 80 FPS, and it does jump up to the triple digits depending on what's going on. So this is fully playable, and I would probably recommend setting it to medium and just locking that V-Sync on. And this PC also has the Raspberry Pi V when it comes to emulation. Here we have the Dolphin emulator. I'm at the native resolution using the OpenGL backend, and we're getting 60 FPS. I've always loved these Intel 4th Gen chips because they do run this emulator quite well. The final thing I wanted to test here was power consumption. Now, obviously the Raspberry Pi 4 is definitely going to have this x86 PC beat out, but it's actually by quite a bit. As you can see, we have the Raspberry Pi 4 on top, overclocked to 2.1 gigahertz, and it's idling around 3.7 watts. And when we take a look at the i3 PC we have, it's idling around 25.2 watts. As for video playback from YouTube, I chose 720p because it's really smooth on the Raspberry Pi 4 when you compare it to 1080p playback, but a 720p video on the Pi 4, full screen, 5.8 watts. On the PC we have here, 29.4. So obviously, this little Optiplex PC does have more raw performance than the Raspberry Pi does, but when it comes to the form factor and power consumption, the Pi has this beat out all day long. And one of the big reasons I actually wanted to make this video was because when the Raspberry Pi 4 was announced, they were claiming that it was a desktop replacement. And in my opinion, it's really hard to replace an x86 desktop PC with an ARM single board computer. I've done several videos with the Raspberry Pi 4. I personally love it for little projects, lower end emulation and things like that. But when it comes to a desktop computer, I would definitely recommend picking something like this up versus a Raspberry Pi.
And seeing what the price is on the Raspberry Pi 4 8 gigabyte model versus something like this, I personally think it's a no-brainer if you're looking for a good desktop experience. But that's pretty much it for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in picking one of these Optiplexes up or a Raspberry Pi, I will leave some links in the description. If you have any questions or if you want to see anything else running on either of these, be it the Raspberry Pi 4 or the Optiplex 3020, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.